<clears throat> the title of my sermon today is Everybody Loves a Parade. And it's a short sermon with a tall message. <clears throat> so the air is starting to warm a bit outside, not exactly this morning, but in general, it is starting to warm. And the skies are starting to clear up and all of a sudden barricades are appearing on New York City streets, so you know what that means. New York City parade season is about to begin. Everybody that drives is like, oh, no, 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 no. I mean, I'd be willing to bet that New York City has more parades than any place in the galaxy. I mean, show me one alien civilization that has more parades. I'd like to see it. Now, of course, New York parade season is really all year long because we have the Thanksgiving Day Parade and the Christmas Parade, the Veterans Day Parade, St. Patty's Day. But when spring kicks in, then the season really starts and it keeps going through the summer into the fall. There's the Easter Parade, there's the Persian Day Parade, there's the Sikh Parade, there's the Pakistani Parade, then we have National Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican Day Parade, the Gay Pride Parade, Cinco de Mayo Parade, the German American Steuben Parade, the Dominican Day Parade, the F Philippines Independence Day, and on and on, because I'm running out of breath right here. I mean, what's not to love? Everybody loves a parade. It's festive, it's fun, it's celebratory, there's music, there's food, you get to wave at people or wave things at people, hold signs, our spirits are high, it makes you feel like you're a part of something. It's true today, and it was true 2,000 years ago. When Jesus and the disciples came into Jerusalem on Passover, I mean, just look at the scripture that we just read. The people in Jerusalem heard that the Messiah is coming. Jesus of Nazareth, who had been healing people and casting out demons and magically feeding massive crowds and raising people from the dead, is coming to Jerusalem. And this guy is coming for Passover that everybody's been hearing about. So the crowd starts to gather along the roads. Now, like any parade, there were probably merchants selling food and musicians playing. People were waving their cloaks, their branches, throwing them on the ground in front of him. There was a great sense of community, of belonging. Their spirits were high. But it's not that aspect of the parade that I want to talk about today. Today, I want to focus on what happens when the music stops and when the parade is done. And when everyone walks away and goes back to their lives. I mean, what happens then? Do they continue to honor the celebration they just attended or do they forget about it? Or God forbid, turn on the very cause that they stood there and supported. I mean, just days after this massive celebration in Jerusalem that we honor today, that Messiah, Jesus, is arrested. As the religious leaders and government officials condemn him, public opinion turns. It's no longer popular to shout, Hosanna in the highest, about this Jesus of Nazareth. In fact, it's controversial. It's even dangerous. And so that crowd, the same people that were waving palms and, and shouting accolades just stand, stands there and watches as Jesus is tortured and crucified, some actually calling for his death. Friends, here's my message today, just right up front, okay? It's easy to celebrate with someone when they are popular, but it's not so easy to stand with someone when there is in pain. Can I have an amen on that? It is easy to celebrate when somebody, when they're popular, but it ain't so easy to stand with them when they're in pain. I mean, thank you, Joe. I like two amens. See, this is good. I mean, I got more. Wait. If, if we laugh with someone, then we should be willing to cry with them too, right? <laughs> I mean, that's what love is about. There's a reason why the words for better or worse are in the marriage vows. 
If we celebrate with somebody when they are popular, we should also stand with them in their pain. And that is why I read those lyrics from Alex's great song that's coming up. When it's all been said and done, there is just one thing that matters. Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? But I, I know we in this 21st century would never do anything like that crowd did back in Jerusalem. Not us. Fourth amen on that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we'd like to believe that, but I'm not so sure. So I thought maybe we might think of a few upcoming celebrations to test that theory. After Easter, we've got three big celebrations coming up back to back to back in May and June and July. For example, in May, one of the biggest parties imaginable will happen, Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> Who does not love Cinco de Mayo? I don't even want to see a hand because I know nobody doesn't like it. Everybody loves the Mexican holiday of Cinco de Mayo. It's festive, it's fun, it's celebratory, there's music, there's food, there's parades. You get to wave things at piñatas, our spirits are high, literally. Because according to Time Magazine, Cinco de Mayo is one of the top 10 drunkest holidays in America. In fact, more people celebrate Cinco de Mayo in the U.S. than in Mexico. On, one, on that one holiday, and I did the math on this, I, trust me, I have checked this like three times because I can't believe these figures, but on that one holiday, Americans consume 81 million pounds of avocados, 335 335,000 gallons of tequila. Uh, Aaron Karen's giving an amen on that. Fine. Where, wherever, wherever you feel moved to, to share. And they spend $600 million on beer. It's quite a party. But what happens when the music stops? and the parade and tequila come to a close and everyone leaves and goes back to their lives, what happens then? I'll tell you what happens then. The next morning, as folks are guzzling their Advils and coffee from all the tequila the night before, they are also reading the paper, which every day has headlines about the tens of thousands of migrants along the border of Mexico who can't get through. In Juarez, Mexico, for example, there are now 30 shelters which accommodate about 5,600 people. And yet right now, there are 15,000 immigrants in that community. Last week, you probably saw a protest broke out over those conditions, which led to a fire that killed over 40 people. But we quickly swipe through that headline to see what's happening with Gwyneth Paltrow's ski trial. I wish her well. <laughs> Friends, if we can afford to celebrate the Mexican culture by spending $600 million in one day on beer, we can afford to put some serious resources behind the crisis at the border. Now is time for the amen. amen. But let's move to June and our world famous Pride Week here in New York City with the parade to end all parades. March, sorry, okay. I think it's a parade, but it's a march. It's a march, all right, well, okay, it's festive. It's festive, it's fun, it's celebratory. There's music, there's food. You get to wave boas and sparkly wands and hold signs of LGBTQ solidarity. But what happens when the music stops and everyone goes home? What happens when the hate speech kicks in or the discriminatory legislation is proposed, or the snide comment is made at the cocktail party, or when drag is criminalized. Do we continue to honor the cause of the giant festive march we just attended? Or do we back away, staying silent and unengaged? But wait, there's July. There may be a few parades on July 4th, Oh, we love to celebrate our independence when rights and freedoms, you know, abound in perfect as they are. And yet when the parade stops and we go home, do we continue to honor the cause we just celebrated? 
I mean, how about the denial of rights and freedoms to the people of color in this country? Or the, de the decaying right to walk our streets without fear of being attacked or murdered? Or barriers to the right to vote or efforts to block one's ability to make decisions about one's own body? Or the eroding First Amendment right to read what you want without having some local school board ban the book because they're uncomfortable with the hard conversations around racism, sexuality, and gender identity. Friends, if you celebrate the cause, you gotta fight for the cause too. So today we begin our journey into Holy Week and Palm Sunday marks that festive parade through Jerusalem, celebrating Jesus as a hero, as Messiah, as God, and yet, <clears throat> In several days, those who celebrated the cause were not willing to fight for the cause. Where do you stand? This week, I want us to take these little crosses. Did everybody get one of these? If you're watching live stream and you want one, just email me and I'll mail it to you. But these are a tangible reminder of why we are doing what we do today. I want us to take these little crosses with us. I want you to put it in a place you can see it and use it to remind yourself to fight for what you believe in, to stand in solidarity with those you celebrate. I mean, hey, everybody loves a parade, right? But not everyone has the courage to follow that parade through to the end. So this morning, my closing prayer is this. May we all find the strength to follow the procession of Palm Sunday through the pain of Good Friday. Because friends, that's where the parade truly starts. And the people said, Amen. Amen.